verse number one and title the message this, Good Friends Will Let You Down. Good friends will let you down. So uh, you remember that as we, as we try our best to preach to you the word of God. Won't keep you too long this morning. In, in Mark chapter number two, the gospel of Mark chapter number two. To get the setting here just a little bit before we read our scripture, Jesus had been preaching in Galilee. Now, Jesus' ministry, after, he, after his public ministry started, he was in continuous uh, work. He, he did a continuous work. He would try, uh, as he would, to get away to pray, and, to, and that he would do occasionally, but just as surely as he got through there, uh, and he would appear back in public, then he would be uh, constantly doing a work. He, would pre- he was preaching, he was teaching, he was healing the sick, uh, he was raising the dead. He was making the blind to see. All of these things Jesus did in his public ministry. And we come to a place here where he is now, uh, he has now left Galilee and he is back in Capernaum. And he, after, after a few days, of, uh, we don't know, it says, uh, verse number one, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house. Now, some days of time had passed by since he had left Galilee. And uh, maybe he was fasting and praying. What, whatever he was doing, it was, a, uh, you know, it was of a necessity. But now he appears back in Capernaum. And uh, it is noised in the ha- that he was in the house. And straightway, uh, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. There were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them, before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. Blessed I pray. Lord, I pray the Spirit of God would take control today. God, take over, uh, Lord, this message. And God, do that which I cannot do. I pray the Spirit of God would uh, give us words and give us wisdom. Help us to say only those things that will be pleasing in thy sight. And God, touch our hearts today with the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we, we find here that Jesus enters the town of Capernaum. And as he enters that... Uh, he was in a house. Now, this might have been Peter's house. This might have been uh, some of the other disciples' house, but we find him in a house. Now, uh, these houses were low built to the ground, so we'll understand the story as we go along. But it was noise that he was in the house. Now, friend, I'll tell you something very important today. It is important that you and I understand that we need God in the house. Number one, we need God in the house. Amen. We need to know that he is in our presence here at the house of God. And friend, I want to tell you something. I've been a lot of places and preached in a lot of places. And it's not always that you can preach in a place where God, you know, makes manifest himself as he does here at the house of the Lord. I thank the Lord for it. Amen. I've been in places where it was real hard to preach because it seemed like there was a discontent spirit in the house. There was a place where the Lord had a hard time working because there was a lot of discontent in the church. But I thank God today we've got a place to come and worship. You and I today have a place to come and worship where we can leave the cares of this world outside those doors. Amen. 
And I have to unload a whole lot of baggage sometimes before I come to church, don't you? There's a lot of things on my mind sometimes before I get to the house of God. But I want to tell you something. I'm glad that when I come in those doors back there, amen, the cares of the world soon disappear. The cares of life soon disappear. And we come into his presence, and we do come into the presence of the Lord here at the church. Amen. It is noised abroad that Jesus was in the house. Everybody heard, hey, Jesus is over in the house. Jesus is in that house over there. And they pinpointed the place where Jesus was at. Well, I'll tell you something. It didn't take long for news to get about that Jesus was in the house. And I'll tell you something, friend. It'll be known far and wide, amen, that this church is a place where Jesus is in the house. And we ought to, when I leave here, people ask me, how'd your service go? Oh, I praise the Lord. We had a good time today, amen. We had a good service today. And if we'll be, let it be known that Jesus is in this place, then we'll soon find out that there are people that want to go where Jesus is at. Now, not everybody of that town went to that, that place, I'm sure. But those that wanted to see Jesus, those that wanted to have a touch from him, showed up at that house. Now, they showed up in such a way that they couldn't cram any more into that little, into that little house. They couldn't get anyone in behind the corner. They had people sitting on people's laps. They probably had people standing on the furniture. But that house was crammed, and Jesus didn't have a lot of room to preach. Boy, I'm looking for the day when we come to the house of God, and I can't go in the choir because the choir's full. Amen. I'll have a hard time getting up and down the aisles because the aisles are full of chairs. Amen. And there won't be a seat left in the house. Look into that day and believe Jesus is going to do it because Jesus is in the house. Amen. And we need that as a church. That is the most important thing about this church is that we maintain that the presence of Jesus is in this place. Now, I've got big dreams. I've got big ideas. I think, you know, I've got big thoughts. Always got to have big plans. But let me tell you something. If all my... If all my plans fall apart, amen, and we're, we're gathered with just a small group of people, it's all right as long as Jesus is in the house, amen. And that's what makes this place so special is that Jesus is in the house. Now, that house that Jesus was in was not particularly any different from any other house. But what made it different was Jesus was there. I, I know, I've, I've, I've talked to folks and I've been around. I know there's places this morning that you could go to church or that I could go to church and we would, we would not experience what we experience here at the church. Amen. And I, have, I, have te I hear testimony of people that, say, that they say, well, I wish the Lord would show up at the church. Amen. But I'm glad to report to you today that God shows up here. Amen. I'm glad to report to you today that Jesus is in the house. And that's an important thing. I'd rather have him as the governor. Amen. I'd rather have him as the president. Amen. Now, I didn't say the president of what. I just said the president. Amen. I'd rather have him, amen, as all the congressmen. And I've had services. We've had services at other churches where, where I've had congressmen come in or, or candidates for congressmen. I've had people come in for some reason. But I'd rather have Jesus, amen. You can give me all the dignitaries. Listen, they want to come here and hear me preach. Any one of them is welcome to come hear me preach. But I want Jesus here. He's more important than anybody. Jesus is the most important person in this church today. The most important one is Jesus. It's not me. It's not the deacons. It's not the Sunday school teachers. It's not the singing leaders. It's not the choir. The, the, what makes all of that work is because of that one man, Jesus. If he's not here, I can't preach. Did you know that? If Jesus don't show up to help me preach, I can't preach. Now, I've got a lot to say. Hey, Amen. You, you come around me, Sister Ashley. Sister Ashley's my witness. I've got a lot to say about it every day, don't I? Say amen, sister. Say amen. You had your chance. Amen. But she works with me. I've got a lot to say, but I'll tell you something. I'll never say a word in the house of God that means anything to anybody except Jesus show up. Amen. 
Jesus is the most important person here today. He's the one, amen, he's the one we ought to look to. He's the one we ought to lean on. And when we come to church, amen, we're looking for him to show his blessings and to share his blessings and his, and his presence upon us. So we see here, number one, that as Jesus went to Capernaum and as he began to preach in the house, that it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house. Now, we not only need him here in the house, but we need also need him at the home. We need the presence of the Lord in our homes. We don't need to leave him here, amen. We need to get in the car, amen, with us. We need to experience his presence, and we need to pray, Lord, I pray, God, that you be present with me when I go home, when I go to work, and, Lord, be present with me in the house. I got off in the, in the study last night, and I was studying, and I was, oh, thank God, I'm glad for the presence of the Spirit of God in the house. And you know what? I'm feeling just as much at home as I can here. I can feel him as much in my car driving down the highway as I can here. Friend, I want to tell you, when Jesus is in the house, amen, you're in the house with Jesus. It could happen just anywhere, just any time. I've drove down the highway before and get from point A to point B, and Jesus get in the car with me, and I have no idea how I got to point B from point A, but I got there safely, amen, and I've rejoiced in the presence of the Lord, amen. Oh, my friend today, where Jesus is, there's safety, and there is peace, and there's excitement, and there's joy. All those things happen when Jesus is in the house. So we need to understand that that's the most important part of our church services or, or of our daily life is if Jesus is in the house. Now, we see Jesus in the house. We see a man that is paralyzed. Now, that's what Paul see, was described as. He was a paraplegic. He had no use of his uh, arms, of his legs, and, and the only thing he could do, I, I probably feel like he could probably talk, but that was all. And we have this man, and we know because of what the Scripture says that it was because of some sin in his life. Now, I'm of the opinion that before this was all happening, I believe this man had probably called on Jesus because he certainly did believe in him because he wanted to get to him. And I believe that as he was uh, somewhere there, he had been praying, Lord, help me, forgive me of my sins. God, I need some healing. But this paralytic man, don't know how long he'd been in that condition, but for, for some time he had laid on his bed. And I, I can only imagine that as he laid there on his bed, as he laid there every day, day in and day, night, day, in and day out, listen, sometimes God has to put us flat on our backs to get our attention. Maybe that's what happened to that fellow. Maybe he had been done been in sin and God had to put him on his back to get his attention. But he had his attention. And as he lay there, maybe his neighbors come over every day. Can I do something for you? Is there anything you need? Can I help you anyway? And, and they went every day probably. Somebody checked in on him to see, did he have everything he needed? Was everything all right? He couldn't do it for himself. Somebody had to help him. I want to tell you something, friends. Sometimes people need our help and they can't get help from nowhere else. And that's why we got to step up and say, can I help you anyway? Now this man was sick, and he, he had the palsy, and uh, he heard Jesus was in the house, and he'd heard, I'm sure he'd heard, of all the good things that Jesus had been doing. Let me get my breath a minute before I pass out. When God, I'll tell you what, when God gets around, friend, these old bodies can't, they just can't do so much, amen. But let me tell you, when, when Jesus was in the house and this man heard that Jesus was in the house, he said, that's the Jesus that healed so-and-so that I heard about over in Galilee. That's the same Jesus that cast out the, 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 the demons into the swine that I heard out over in Gadara. This is that same Jesus. And if it's him, he can heal me. So he had faith. He had faith. So he called his neighbors up. Now I'm reading between the lines. You just got to read with me. If you can't see him, trust me. Amen. He called his neighbors up. Hey, I need some help over here. Here come four of his neighbors because his, they said he was born of four. So he called four of his neighbors. He said, fellas, he said, I know that I hear Jesus is down the street in that house over there. And, uh, uh, and I believe if I can just get to Jesus, I believe that he can heal me. Now, these other four, they had to have faith too. 
You know what? They could have said, nah, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's just hearsay. That's not going to happen. You've been sick too long. There's no way you can get any help. But they said, all right, we'll get you down there. So his four very good friends got on one corner of his bed each, or his cot, or his mattress. There's one portion of the scripture says the mattress. They got on his mattress, on four corners of his mattress. And they said, all right, fellas, we get him down there. So uh, I believe a leap of joy went over in his heart when he knew that he was going to get to Jesus. So they got on his bed and they carried him down there to the, to the, to the, and they got about a block away and all this tremendous multitude of people was gathered around that one little house. Now right then those four friends could have said, man, we'll never get you in there. We'll take you back home. But because of their persistence and because of their faith and because of the faith of the one that was sick, they said, we'll figure it out somehow. Maybe they come up to the crowd and said, excuse me, excuse me, and nobody was paying any attention to them. They were standing out. Listen, that place was so packed full. They had the doors open, had the windows open, and, they, and people were standing there just to get a glimpse and just to hear a word from the Lord. I've been in that situation one time in my life. I preached to a crowd of people one time in my life where they were standing, listen, they were sitting on the window sills. They were looking outside. They were gathered all around in the courtyard. And I, and I got to preach to them. Amen. The house was full. You couldn't get another person in it. And I couldn't understand them. They couldn't understand me. But through an interpreter, I got to preach to them the Word of God. Amen. And several of them got saved that night. They were eager to hear the Word of God. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if folks got today where they say eager to hear the word of God that they <coughs> that they couldn't get in the house? Preacher, that'll never happen. That's why it won't ever happen because people got a negative attitude. Amen. I don't. Amen. I believe God's just as big, big now as he was then. And I believe we'll pray just right. And I believe we'll seek the face of God. And I believe we'll invite folks to come, come to the house of God because Jesus is already here waiting on them. Amen. I'm going to get beside myself here in just a minute, so I better continue on. So they get him up there, and they say, well, I don't know what we're going to do. And one of the four, you know, they set him down there, and one of the four is looking around, hey, fellas, here's a ladder. And one of them being the engineer that he is, he said, you know what? I know how these roofs are made. I know how these roofs are made. He said, we get him in. But do you know who this house is? It's Peter's house. He won't care. Or it's John's house or whoever, he, he won't care. And so they get, listen, they went through a lot of trouble to get this man to the Lord. You get what I'm saying? They went through a lot of trouble. They bore a lot of burden. They bore a lot of heartache. They went and jumped through a lot of hoops to get this one man to Jesus. I'm telling you, friend, the worth of a soul cannot be, cannot put a price on the worth of a soul. No doubt there was others in the, in the house that were sick too and Jesus was healing them, but this man did not want to miss out. He said, fellas, please, any way you can get me to the Lord, if you'll just get me to him, I know he'll help me. So they got him, they got up on the roof and there he's down, fellas, said, you got some rope? Got some rope, tied the rope onto him, they drug him up on the roof. One fellow says, now set him over here, we're going to have to take part of this roof apart. So they took off that outer layer of roof and they the, that roof and they took off the branches and the limbs or whatever was on there and they got them a hole big enough and that so happened to be they was right in front of the Lord, amen, just right in front of him, right in the right place. Good friends will let you down. So they got up there and said, now this is going to be, we, we can do it, but get a hold of the rope and let's hold him over this hole and let's let him down. Good friends will let you down, Amen. If they're good friends, if they do it, they'll do it like these folks did. And so they got a hold of him, and they, they got a hold of the rope, said, all right, let him down real easy. Now, you would think the crowd inside, because probably stuff had already fell on some of them's head, some of them might got a little annoyed at the, at the fact that this man had to get to God. But he was willing to do anything he had to do to get to the Lord. And these, these friends that let him down, we're willing to do whatever was necessary to get him to God. Are you, listen, let me ask you something. If you've got a lost loved one, if you've got a lost friend, are you willing to do anything to get him to the Lord? 
Are you willing to pray for them? Are you willing to witness to them? Are you willing to do anything that's necessary that God lays on your heart to get them to Jesus? God help us. Oh, my friend today, they were willing. So they got him down before the Lord. Now, there's, there's the picture in your mind. They let him down. His good friends let him down, and they let him down in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. So these friends did not give up. They only kept trying until they got him to the Lord. I know people, my mama had prayed for a certain person for years and years and years. Finally, they come to the Lord. Amen. They come to know the Lord. Mama shouted for two days. Amen. Amen. She didn't give up. Listen, somebody prayed for me, didn't give up on me, and I got in. Thank God. Amen. Somebody was concerned about my soul, and I got saved by the grace of God. Somebody was concerned about your soul. I don't know how you old you was when you got saved, but I want to tell you something. Somebody was concerned for your soul. Somebody got on their face before God for you and begged the Lord to put you under conviction that you might come to know him. Amen. Aren't you glad somebody did? Amen. Aren't you glad you had some friends that would lift you up to the Lord in prayer? Aren't you glad you had some mamas and some daddies that would pray to you and say, Lord, save my children. Well, y'all ain't near as excited as I am. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad I'm in, thank God. I'm glad I'm bought with a price. I'm glad my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and I'm on my way to heaven. But boy, I got a lot of people that I know that's going to hell without God. Now, Jesus was this, this man's only hope. This man's friends were the only ones that could let him down. But boy, they let him down in a good way, didn't they? But his friends just kept on. They kept on seeking the Lord for him. They kept on trying to figure out a way to get him to God. And I'll tell you something. Hey, I've been asking you to pray about a certain fella. Hey, the Lord's working on his heart. Amen. God's dealing with him, just little subtle things that he says to me once in a while. That hard heart is beginning to be broken by the word of God. Hallelujah. I found out there's other, other, he's got other friends that's working on him on the other side. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you, I don't want to give up till I hear that he's got in. Amen. Because there is hope. For anybody that realize they need the Lord. I'm way ahead of myself. So this man gets in. And we see as he gets before Jesus, we see the graciousness of the Lord. Christ looked and he saw their faith. He saw the faith of that one that was laying there before him because he did have faith. He wanted, I believe he wanted to get to the Lord. Now you could say, well... His friends knew that Jesus was there, so they just took him there. That could be the case. But my personal belief is that this man went of his own free will, of his own accord, because that's the way I got saved. I came in because I wanted to, because Jesus put me under conviction, and because I realized I needed to get to the Lord. So I believe this man had a desire to get to Jesus. He might not have been looking at him for anything you know, but the, but the healing, but he, I believe he had faith and the desire to get to Jesus, knowing Jesus could help him when he got there. And when I got saved, I wasn't particularly looking to get saved that night. I'll just tell you. But once I got in the house, Jesus was in the house, amen, they want no help for me at all, amen. I give under to the pressure of the Spirit of God and got born again by God's grace. Have you ever had that experience? Have you had, ever had that experience where you were under conviction of the Spirit of God and God convicted you and you said, oh, I need to get saved, and you cried upon the Lord? Listen, if you're here and you're saved, that's the kind of experience you had. It might not have been like mine, and yours ain't like mine, and mine ain't like yours, but amen, it all happened the same way. We got under conviction and got saved by the glorious grace of God because of a gracious Savior. And we find the man laying there before Jesus. All he can do is look up, amen. And he's looking up at the Lord. The Lord's looking down at him. And he says to that, he says to that man, let thy sins be forgiven thee. So see, you can't hide nothing from the Lord. Jesus knows your sins. He knew the man's sin, whatever sin that was. He knew the man's sin. He said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And so as, as he did that, let's read on here just a little bit. He said, thy sins, uh, 
thy sins be forgiven thee. <clears throat> but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Now, there's always that crowd. There's always those negative gainsayers. There's always those that try to critique every word that the preacher says. They try to critique everything that God's doing. And they say, hum, well, who can forgive sins but only God? Now, they were right. What well, you read the verse, they were right in what they said. But you know what they didn't realize? They didn't realize that God was standing right before them with their very eyes. There was God in the flesh. And they accused him of blasphemy. Well, let me tell you something, friend. You've got to be accused of a whole lot of things. And he's being accused of a whole lot of things. But you know what? In the end it is, God's God. God's God. And the works of God are the right works. Now, let's read what these scribes said. You know, is that religious crowd? Is that crowd that, you know, they puff their chest up because they know more than everybody else and they don't know nothing, but they think they do? And here's, here I imagine here's the way they say this. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Hmm. They were reasoning there, and they say, Why doth this man speak blasphemies? This man speaking blasphemies. Who can forgive sins? Only God. All in their religious order, all in their non spiritual knowledge, all in their head knowledge, they say, Who can forgive sins but God? Now, as, as always, Verse 8, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Jesus was there. He knew they were, he already knew they were sitting there. But when they asked that question and was reasoning in their hearts because that was in their heart, God knows the heart. And he zeroed in on them and looked right into the depths of their soul. And, and he wants to know, why are you reasoning this? And Jesus looked into the depths of our soul. Do you ever feel like Jesus is looking right through you? Amen. He is. He's looking right in the depths of your soul. And Jesus said this. Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say the, to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. He said, What's easier, for me to forgive his sins or tell him to take up his bed and walk? But they knew, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. So he said, you got to understand that I do have the power to forgive sin because I'm the Son of Man. I am God in the flesh. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way unto thine house. So right there in front of the scribes, he said, now what, what do you think is what do you think is the greatest if I say for, that if I forgive this man's sins or if I say take up your bed and walk? Jesus did both. He forgave him of his sins and he told him to take up his bed and walk and go his way. And the faith of that man was what caused him to get up and to walk. My friend, I'm telling you today, God's a powerful God. And this man, as we see Jesus, as we see him in, the, in his grace, we see the scribes and their fault finding, and then we see the man exercises his faith. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Now this man, it says here, the Word of God tells us that immediately the man laying down, he didn't, I don't believe he laid there and tested it out first. He said, God said it, I believe it, and I'm going to do it. And friend, I'm telling you, by the man's faith, he got up and he walked. And he went about his business. I don't know how long he'd been since he walked. I don't know how, but don't you know that when he got up from there and people saw the difference in his life and saw the difference that Jesus had made in him, don't you know that he attracted attention with himself? And all the people that were there were amazed. You know what I said? We never saw it on this fashion. We ain't never seen anything like this before. 
Oh, my friend today, it should be in our lives. God help me. It should be in my life that people would look and say, we ain't never seen anything like that before. Amen. We'd love to have it in the house of God where people go out here and say, man, we've never seen it on that fashion. We've never seen it where God worked like that. Amen. We're looking for a greater thing from the Lord. And that's, I believe, what this man was looking for when he came to Jesus. He was looking for a greater thing than he had. And, friend, I'm looking for greater things from the Lord. We're living in the last days of time. Surely Jesus must be coming soon. Amen. Look on every hand. There's everything's going on around the world that can go wrong. Everything's going on that can go on. And we see nations rising against nations. We see nations joining together in forces that we didn't suspect. But I'm telling you what all that's leading to. It's leading to the day when Jesus will step out on the cloud and say, Arise, come up hither, amen. And the born again believers, the children of God, those that have been birthed into the family of God, in the moment in the twinkle of eye, we're going out of here. Zip. <laughs> to ever be in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. What a day that'll be. Now some of you look at me like, what? You must have drunk too much Mountain Dew this morning before you come to church. I ain't had none. Ain't had none at all. I'm going to have a half a cup of coffee. I want to tell you something. It's real, friend. This is real. Jesus is real. And he's the same Jesus today. And he can still heal the sick. Man, if he wants to, he can raise the dead. One of these days he is going to raise all the dead that are living, that are, that are, that are dead in him. He's going to raise them all again. I want you to know some friends, sometimes we need good friends to let us down. We need people that would pray for us. Listen, when somebody comes and asks you for help, hey amen, let's get on their side and help them. Let's, let's, be, let's be like those four that bore this man up. It may be just prayer that they're wanting. But let's be one of them good neighbors. Let's one, be one of them good friends that, let, that do like this man and lead him up to the Lord and pray for him and help him any way that we can. Church is good about that. But let us in our individual life say, Lord, help me to be a blessing to someone today. Help us get somebody to Jesus. Look, if everybody in here could get one person to the Lord, if everybody in this building, they fought 55, 60 here this morning, if everyone over here this morning could bring one person to Jesus or could bring one person to the house of God, let me preach to them. And those got saved. Oh, friend, it'd be noise abroad that Jesus is in the house. I'll tell you something. I believe it's noise abroad. I believe, I believe people know that if you come to Gable Creek, you worship the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. But it's all God. It's all him. It ain't me, but it's the Lord. I'm thankful that he shows his presence at the house of God. Do you know the Lord today? While everyone stands, every head bowed, no one looking around. I'm through. I want to pray for someone here this morning and say, Preacher, I've never experienced salvation. I've never been saved. And I don't want to go to hell. I want if you'd raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray.